Hello everyone again and welcome back to Taylor Aerospace. Uh, this time again we're going to be departing from the standard career file that I've been doing. And we're going to move back onto the tutorial section. And today it's going to be a tutorial on how to get to Minmus. So if you watched my other video, you've done the MUN. Next logical step is Minmus. So first thing to do, go to the vehicle assembly building where we always start. And this time it's very similar to the old ship, in fact it's almost identical to the other ship if you see my other video. So we start with a Mark 1 command pod, a couple of, which have a couple of parachutes on there with the top one and two drogues just in case. I don't know why, I just like to have three parachutes. I suppose it looks pretty. So we're going to add ourselves a heat shield and then a decoupler underneath that. So only the command pod itself will be returning with us on this mission. And again, like our previous mission, we will add in a Science Junior unit, the Mystery Goo, and then all of the science equipment you can. Hopefully you've unlocked more since the Mun mission, but again, just slap on as many science experiments as you can to this. It's, you know, just do as much as you can. Do as, if you're in science mode or career mode, you might not have all of these. Um, and, as, you know, take up as much as you can, that you can get more science. So once again, we'll be adding the... Oh no, that's what I used last time, sorry. It was the FLT400. This time, I'm going to be using the big one. Um, I did mention in my last video that I prefer to do this personally. Um, hopefully, you've unlocked these parts by now. Uh, this is what I like to use. So stick your landing legs on there in a quad format. Some people go for the tripod. I just feel it's a little too unstable. Stick a Terrier engine underneath that. That's all the power we'll need on Minmus. Uh... Minmus does not have much gravity at all. It's actually most of your fuel will be spent getting there. But once you're there, getting down to the planet and back up, it's pretty easy to be honest. Uh, in terms from a fuel standpoint, anyway. Um, but we will be adding underneath that the FLT400 um, with another Terrier engine, and then uh, separating that with a decoupler, and then two of the FLT800s. Pull two away there just to make a copy for later. Uh, add some radial decouplers. We only... Well, actually, I thought we only needed the two. I made a bit of a boo-boo here. You do need four. You'll see me making that myself in a minute. Um, put those on aerodynamic mode. And we will shove a swivel in the middle. And again, that's for your gimbal range and actoring ability. And then you put two reliance on the side. It just gives you more power. Put a nose cone on top, make them aerodynamic, move them around to make it look nice and uh, just more balanced generally in the air. Uh, put some struts on here just to strut it all together and it makes it a lot more aerodynamically sound because everything's not just going to be wobbling about and the Kraken will attack. So again, as per my last video, you put the fuel tanks going from the outside tank to the centre tank. It's You could do this via the flow priority, but... Honestly, this is just easier. So you'll see here now that I start realising we need things like uh, batteries uh, and some wings as well. So I use the Delta Deluxe winglets, but you use whatever you can. And again, put them on a quad format and it will just give you a lot more stability and control during flight. And here you'll see me think about which batteries I want to add because going to Minmus is pretty far away you'd be surprised how long it takes so you definitely need those and then I stuck a couple of solar panels on if you've unlocked solar panels great use them um, if you haven't just throw in a few more batteries so save the ship and then yeah you'll see me hard cut back here because I actually flew this and realized it wasn't powerful enough uh, for some reason I just couldn't do it so I just added one on each side so we've got a quad format and it is just literally a copy of the other two. That's all you need with the fuel pipe. Again, going from the outside to the middle. So we'll warp over here to the launch. Uh, full throttle up, SAS on, as per usual. And then go. Uh, launch all of all five. Make sure it is all five of your rockets go at the same time. Once you reach about 100 metres a second, you want to just start tilting slightly over to the 90 degree angle mark. Um, this ship is not actually the most stable, I will admit. If you're following along, it, there are probably better designs out there, but this is how I did it. And as you can see, it's reasonably stable. You start tipping yourself over. You do sometimes have to make sure you don't tip too far, and you have to you can see me here fighting against it a little bit. Um, 
and it does tip a little too far over sometimes but you want to try and get down to about the 45 degree angle mark by about 10,000 meters uh, roughly it you don't have to be that accurate this ship has got a lot of extra fuel okay and then when the outside tanks are drained as they will be now you can see that the middle tank which looks like it's nearly empty is full and again that's what those fuel that's what the fuel pipes do for you you can get a little bit more complicated i could have done proper asparagus staging on this but honestly it, there's no need it's got enough fuel anyway it would have been more efficient that way but it doesn't really matter so yeah once you've got an apoapsis high enough and you are about between 50 seconds and a minute away from your apoapsis marker you just start tilting down trying to get as low as possible to the 90 degree mark until you're basically flat and then trying to gain as much horizontal speed as you can so I stopped here at roughly, I believe it was around about 100 kilometers up. That's about where I like to start. You can do it much lower. I just kind of like round numbers, to be fair. So yeah, you stop there. It's quite a nice ascent profile. It's not the best. It's not the most efficient. Got the job done. So set a manoeuvre marker there. And just pull it outwards on prograde to get yourself into a circularized orbit. And again, just get the other side to about 100 kilometers. That that'll do um, quite nicely for this mission set yourself to the maneuver node and we'll warp forward to that point so yeah this, this there are better ships that could have been made for this but this does the job and it's got enough fuel that you can make mistakes that's what I like about it and that's what all of my ships are like they're just way oversized for the job needed but, uh, the only difference really between this one and the Mun one was the two extra boosters. It was a quad booster system rather than a, a, a two. So yeah, just full throttle again on this, following the maneuver node. If you haven't unlocked the maneuver node, the ability to hit maneuver nodes if you're doing career mode, just point prograde. It won't be as accurate, but it will get that job done for you. So if you go into your map view here, you can see your orbit expanding outwards. And again, I'm not going into incredible detail here about how to get into orbit. If you're heading to Minmus, you know, if you've already done the money, you should be hopefully able to do this on your own. If you can't, um, maybe keep practicing at just trying to get into orbit before you attempt something of this scale. But once you're in orbit and you've got a fully circularized orbit, as you can see here, you are obviously you're going to want to set Minmus as your target. There we go. If you left click on it, I think left click. Yeah, left click. So you can see our ascending node here is quite far off. Minmus has a fairly inclined orbit there. And what I like to do is try and match that. So we'll head down to the descending node and we're going to need to point in a normal direction for this. So ascending node will be anti-normal, descending node will be normal. Uh, which is the, they're the, in case you're just not quite sure, those are the triangular ones and the upside down triangle. So yeah, the purple ones. And again, when you get close to the descending node, you don't have to be incredibly accurate. Just when you're on it, full throttle again. And just try and bring that descending node as close as you can down to 0 0.0. 0 0.1, 0 0.2 honestly is fine. But if you can, try and get it to 0, 0.0. It just makes things a lot easier. And it means you're mostly coming at an equatorial orbit against your target. So here, you can see us pulling down now. Uh, getting to approximately 1.1, 1.0. And obviously with a Terrier engine, which is what's being used here, it does take a little bit of time just to push that through. But there you go, 0.1. I've clearly decided I'm happy with that. And like the Mun, you're going to set it so that Minmus is, if you're looking at it like a clock, is at the 3 o'clock angle, uh, the 3 o'clock mark, and you'll set your maneuver node marker to go roughly at about 6, or between 6 and 7. Um, that's about the best place to set it. If you're looking at it like a clock face. So then just pull prograde. Go straight past your mun there. Don't go too far. Uh, as I just did. Re sort of go. And then I like to use the. There we go. So you can focus view on Minmus. To see exactly where your proposed orbital line is going to come into play. Which is there. Which is too far out. That's far too far out. So I use the little graphing maneuver editor down at the bottom. Uh, there we go. And then I pull that bar, you can see me moving all the way down to the bottom so you get as fine a movement as possible. And then keep pulling prograde. 
So you can see that in highlighting the number and just getting a lot closer. So go anywhere really on Mimus for about 20 to 30,000, 40,000, something like that. Um, I think I went, I ended up going a little bit higher than that in the end. Okay, so once you've got it set, just warp around to your maneuver node. Um, you don't, you do have to be reasonably accurate with Minmus because there's it, because Minmus has such low gravity, even a very very small change will make your orbit go all over the place, and I really do mean a small change. Um, so you can see here, I'm boosting outwards. I'll have to dump the our last final stage about halfway through this burn, uh, which is why I'm not currently in the map view. So there you go, we'll get rid of that, and we'll keep burning on to Minmus. So you can see here our orbital line is going way out, and you use most of your fuel just to get past the mud. So we'll slow down now, get rid of the time warp, and I like to see them come in together. I just like to get rid of the maneuver editor and just see those grey maneuver nodes come in. So there you go, you can see there, and even just to see a little tiny thrust pulls you right in. Um, and I'm very happy with that, I think that's... So I'm put... What am I doing? Yeah, so I'm pulling my thrust limiter down here, just so I can be a lot more accurate in where I want to be with Minmus. So there you go, I'm pretty happy with that. But even at the thrust limiter all the way down, you see how just a little... Oh, um, made it so far out. And we'll start our maneuver node there on the periapsis of Minmus, and just pull retrograde. You don't; it doesn't need much fuel, as you can see, to bring it down into a circularized orbit. So we'll warp forward. Then you can see it's going to take ten days, ten days to get to Minmus. Um, this wasn't the best Minmus capture, to be fair. It can be done quicker, but this is why you need solar panels if you've got them, or at the very least. A fair few batteries strapped onto it because it's very easy to run out of electricity when you're heading to Minmus. Okay, and here we are. Around the big green ball itself. Hopefully we'll land soon. Uh, determine what it's made of. The Kerbals have wondered ever since they saw it in the night sky. I mean, everyone thinks the moon's made of cheese. I believe they think Minmus is made of mint, which would make sense with, the, with its colour. Although, interestingly, uh, I think things flavoured with mint are actually white. Oh no, I'm going on a bit of a tangent here, I apologise. Um, yeah, so just pull retrograde, uh, or follow your manoeuvre node, and just full throttle again. It does not take much to pull down into a circularised orbit of Minmus. And of course, we're there now, we're on a bit of an angle. Um, so that's not too bad. Again, with Mimus, it doesn't take much to change that if you're heading somewhere you're not sure about. Now, I've decided I want to land in here, which is Mimus's Greater Flats. Because, well, they're sea level for a start, and they're flat, as the name would suggest. And you can see they're dried up seabed. They're completely flat, they're not mountainous at all. It just makes for a very, very easy landing spot. I mean, there are some people who would argue going to Mimus is actually easier than going to the mud. Um, all it needs is just more fuel to get there. Once you're there, it really is quite easy. Okay, I'm just uh, strapping everything here to a action group. An action group, I should say. So that I can just hit one and it can do all of my experiments all in one go rather than me have to click all the individual pieces constantly. So I'm going to run a... Oh, I can never remember what this thing's called. I call it a magnetron, and I'm sticking with that. So I'll run the magnetron boom. Again, I don't get, actually get any science because I'm playing this in uh, sandbox mode. But you can do this in space high over uh, planets. You can do it in space near planets. I believe you might even be able to do it in space just above the surface as well. So you can get at least two, potentially three. So you, But you can't run it on the surface, which is why you see me running that here. So... I've now decided I want to land in this sea. I'm done with doing a quick maneuver node, pulling retrograde, and you can see that my orbital line falls right into those flat areas, which I'm very happy with. So again, we'll thrust for, we'll warp forward, sorry, to that point. 
uh, point retrograde. I don't even really bother with the maneuver node at this point. Um, you don't need it. I was just doing that more for show so you could see what the plan was. And then when we get there, we can pull retrograde and it will pull us right into a lovely line of fire with that, uh, with the dried up seabed that you can see there. Okay. So you want to get it nice and low. And then we'll fast forward time again to make sure you want to point retrograde for a start. Uh, anytime you're landing on any planet, you'll normally want to point retrograde, particularly one without an atmosphere, because you're going to have to burn off all of your horizontal speed. So the good thing is, though, as you can see, we're getting very close, and there's no real spe speed buildup. Um, we'll press G as the gear action group, so we can lower our landing legs there. And just as we're getting closer, we'll want to start throttling. So you can push there, and you can see how quickly I'm wiping off all of my horizontal speed. So I've just stopped that so I can warp forwards a little bit in time. Because uh, otherwise you're going to waste all of your speed high up in the, in the orbit. And then by the time you've actually got close to the planet, you'll have gained all of that speed back again. And you're just going to be using more fuel than is necessary. Um, you can practice this. Obviously I can, I've done it quite a lot of times, so I know sort of where to go and when to stop warping and when to put my thrust to full. Um, you will learn how to do this. You'll probably want to do it with craft with extra amounts of fuel in them and some giving them when you first start practicing this. But yeah, so you can see here now that at 500 meters above the surface, I'm just wiping off some of my speed so that my craft will end up pointing upwards. So now I'm just gradually using the shift and control buttons rather than Z or Z and X to just balance the craft out and make sure we don't... Because you can see, even at a very low thrust level, they've barely got the engines turned on. And they're just lowering that speed so quickly. But you can also see, at 100 meters above the surface, you don't gain much speed as you pull in. The gravity on Minimus is extremely low. But yeah, so just thrust up, control your speed, try and bring it to as low as anything really below 4 meters a second would be optimal. Um, and you can see here I'm bringing that down, 10 meters above the surface now, and touch down! Oh, and it appears we're made. It's made of rock and not mint. Who would have known? <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, hit number one for your action group and pull off all of your science. Uh, you'll get quite a lot of science for landing on Minmus. as a fairly good multiplier. Right, and then, so the next thing to do is pull off a crew report. And obviously, let's get Jeb out there. He'll do a nice little EVA report for us. And because we're not going to be bringing any of this equipment back, he is just going to quickly take all of the data that we've just pulled. There we go. That way, he can, when he gets back into the command module, all that data will be stored in the command module, and we can ditch all of the science experiments themselves. Now, if you brought um, Bob along, you could reset all these experiments and do them again at a different stage. Uh, for the sake of simplicity, I just brought Jeb and just do this, the experiments once. But yeah, so here we go. You can see just walking is quite difficult for poor old Jebby boy here. We'll take a surface sample. Lower our visor. It is quite sunny out. And all important, we will plant that flag. Uh, apparently, I forgot I wasn't happy with where we planted that flag. Um, so I'm planting another one now. I think I've done it just so I can have it pointed the right direction so I could get myself a thumbnail for this video. Um, I'm pretty sure I've, that's why I've done that. So there we go. You can see how flat this area is. Jeb's decided he wants to have a bit of a play around. And who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? We can have a little bit of a fly with our EVA. Uh, 
but yeah. So we can have a little fly here. I think I'm just trying to get a thumbnail for the video by placing him on top. You'll see I struggle with this dramatically. But yeah, who wouldn't want to play around on a low gravity surface like this? I mean, have you seen those videos of them driving the moon buggy? It looks awesome. Or playing golf on the moon. I think actually wasn't his golf ball rediscovered recently as well. I actually think that would be awesome. I mean, come on, you, you know you would. I'm sure one of them... I'm sure one of them actually said that just jumping, the, sen the sensation of just being there and walking was fun. Just inherently, it was it was being like... I suppose it would be, wouldn't it? It would be a sort of planet-sized or moon-sized trampoline. But yeah, so I think I've got myself my thumbnail there. And I decide now that there are other things you can get on Minmus. There are other things you can do. So, uh, for example, Minmus stones you can find. Or green sandstone, I believe they're called. They get like mun stones on the mun. You get like duna stones on duna. But this is a green sandstone. But unfortunately, they don't actually spawn in the flats. So they do only spawn in the more mountainous regions surrounding the flats and obviously in the lowlands and the midlands and whatnot and the poles biomes. Um, I think there are a couple of different things you can find on Minmus, but there's, I believe, and I, I might be wrong here, but I believe there's only one type that you can pick up, and that's the green sandstone. Um, so you can see I'm heading out here. I've sped up the footage quite dramatically, uh, being extremely careful not to allow Jab to hit the ground as... Uh, he did in the last video where he went for a little tumble. Um, but yeah, just trying to find it amongst the scatter features can be quite difficult. I think there's several times that I slow, I, I return to normal speed because I think I found it and then uh, very clearly haven't. Okay, normally uh, it's quite small compared to, you see that's why I'm going for these little ones because it's normally quite small compared to the rest of them around it. And here I have actually managed to find it. So this is what your green sandstone looks like if you're after it. Okay, and then you can pick that up and he pulls out his little, his little chisel and his little hammer. And pop, we have a lot more science. Okay, so just back to the ship, and I know I'm about four kilometers out here, so I do speed up the time using the inbuilt time warp um, ability. And you do have to be careful because you can go, you know, see here, I'm going 70 meters a second. If he hits the ground at this speed, Jab's a goner. He will, he will certainly unalive. But we'll slow down the footage here. And there we go. Jeb has safely found his way back to his craft. And I'm just going to say, I want this. I want to go to the moon and I want to use an EVA pack. I know they don't use them in reality because they're far too difficult to control, but I want one. But that's it. We're done on Minmus. There you go. If you've made it here, if you've managed to collect all of your science, be proud. It's actually, it is, uh, like anything in this game, quite difficult to do your first go. But we're ready to go home. So fire up those rockets full throttle them, pull your legs in, and you can go pretty much flat straight away on Minmus because the gravity is just so low. You can see my uh, apple apps, it's there just shooting up. I've come way, f I actually probably used far too much speed there. But yeah, so just set yourself a um, maneuver node right onto the uh, apple apps again, and just go prograde, get yourself an orbit around Minmus. Get, just get back into a circular orbit and then from there we can work to leaving Minmus and heading back to Kerbin and getting home safe. So as with everything in Kerbal, it's all about doing things in stages. So leave the surface, get into a, a suborbital flight, get into an orbit, get from orbit into an orbit of another body, so the sphere of influence of Kerbin say. Yeah, it's all about just doing things in stages. So there we go. We'll use, if we go there, you can use uh, Minmus's own gravity to help you if you go on that side of Minmus. So we'll pull it in. And we, what I'm trying to do is get the um, periapsis, my curbing periapsis when I leave Minmus to be as low as possible. But there we go. So it's, again, it's just prograde. You just pull prograde at that angle and you will get this orbit. So 
So fast forward this footage here, and you can see there, nicely set. So goodbye, Minmus. It was nice seeing you. It's good with all our scientific data that we discovered what you were actually made of. Turns out, rock. Who would have known? So what I'm doing now is just pointing retrograde and pulling that angle right the way in. I'm getting very far down. Now normally what I would do is just go underneath the 70k mark down to about 25 or 30 and just let it go. But this time I decided to actually recircularize. So that's what I did. Once you're that low, you can then pull your put a Minova node at your periapsis and just pull on retrograde. It's going to take a lot of fuel, almost all of what we've got left. But you can just pull on retrograde and then re-orbit around Kirby. Well, I suppose you're already in an orbit around Kirby and you can have a more circularized orbit and less extreme orbit around Kirby. A less eccentric orbit. We want to use our correct terminology. But yeah, so point maneuver node uh, again. And again, if you don't have these, just prograde and retrograde is effectively all I'm using in these situations. It's For the moment, it's pretty much all you would need. Um, and there you go. You can see our orbit line coming in. And the reason I've done this is to show you, A, just that you can. This is how much fuel this craft has. It has an amazing amount of fuel. So you can make a lot of mistakes with this craft and you will be able to still get home. Uh, but also, because once you've got a circularized orbit, you can decide where you want to land rather than just allowing it to. In my last video, you could see that I just used the heat shield and just went. So here, I'm deciding that I want to try and land back at the space station. Uh, sorry, the space center. So you can see there that I'm just making... I'm trying to get my intended orbit to come... There you go, using... Just using the maneuver node just to move my orbit around and try and get it to roughly where I think I need it to go to be able to, once all the drag hits and you slow down from the aerodynamic forces, that that's where, because that's why it needs to be further out, because you will slow down dramatically as you hit the atmosphere and your proposed landing site will change dramatically. But there we go, I'm happy with that. I think that's roughly where I need to be. Um, is it where I need to be? Will I be able to land at the Kerbal Space Station? Stick around for the next two minutes and you'll find out. Uh, you may be able to tell the answer from the tone of my voice. <laughs> but yeah, so just when you hit the atmosphere like I have there, you just point yourself retrograde once again. Use the decoupler to detach and it will activate the parachutes as well. And then you can just cruise on down back to Kerbin. I was hoping I could catch some fireworks, but unfortunately I detached far too early for that to happen. And my other pieces just disappeared into the black void and scariness of space. But yeah, the ablator did a good job here. With a single pod like this, generally, as long as you've got a heat shield on it and obviously the parachutes, you'll be fine. But as you can see there, I vastly underestimated how how I would get slowed down. I mean, I'm nowhere near, even near the space station. I'm, I barely managed to land on this continent, on this piece of landmass at all. But there you go, the parachutes have worked well. They're slowing us down. I've just taken us to a lovely little, hidden the UI and just taken a lovely little view in as we descend back to Earth. Kerbin, sorry. Not Earth. Kerbals don't know what Earth is. What's Earth? I don't know. I've never been there. I'm not an alien. Um, <laughs> yeah. And there we go. What a beautiful vision of the Kerbal's future. And land. And there we go. Jeb safely made it to the second moon of Kerbin. And if you've managed to achieve the same, well done. Congratulations. Again, and like anything in this game, it's not easy. If you've managed to achieve that, that's fantastic. So I'll just recover a few parts there. And in your game, you'll now be able to do your research and development. And you can unlock some new parts there. 
But then that's it for this video. If this was able to help you reach Minmus at all, then that's fantastic. If you like my stuff, give it a like. If you dislike it, give it a dislike and let me know why, and I'll try and do better in the future. But so that's it for this video. Uh, thank you very much for watching. We'll save this file up, and hopefully I can do some more tutorials for you in the future. Uh, again, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Stay safe.